Today we're going to be doing the 2020 December silver question, stuck in a rut. So if you did the bronze question for this contest, it's pretty much the same idea. We have a 2D grid and we have cows moving to the right or moving up. When these cows are moving, they're going to leave a path of eaten grass behind them. If other cows reach that eaten grass, they are going to stop. So in the bronze question, we just wanted to know the stopping point of cows. However, in the silver question, we're going to look at the blame. So the main idea of this question is if cow A stops cow B and cow B stops cow C, cow A in turn stops cow C. And this might seem really hard at first, but it's actually not that hard. So we're going to go over and look at the algorithm for this question. So what we're going to do to solve this is we're going to start solving the bronze question. So if you already saw the bronze video, you can skip ahead a bit to step three. But first, we are going to find all possible collisions. So again, the first most obvious idea would be just to simulate. So what happens when I simulate is I'm going to go down here. And I'm just going to say, okay, there's a collision here and there's a collision here. And this would work except it doesn't. So in this example right here, this actually is not going to work. So we're going to have two possible collisions here. But the reason this is wrong is if we were to actually simulate it out, we would see that this would actually be stopped right here and therefore would be unable to block this point. So what happens here is that we have a collision here, but no second collision here. So the second collision doesn't exist because of the timing. And the way we're going to get around this is we are just going to schedule. So we're going to find all of the possible collision points like we do here. And then we're just going to sort them. So we're going to, so in step two, what we're going to do is we're going to keep a list. And this list is just going to keep all of the stopping times. So this is the same as in bronze. We're going to have a list of all of the stopping times. They're going to start out as infinity. And then what we're going to do is we are going to look at the collisions. So we have a collision here and a collision here. So what we're going to see is we're going to see that right here, this collision is going to happen, and it is in fact going to stop point 1. So let's say this collision occurs at time 1. We're going to update the value of the list here and say that, okay, point 1 stopped at time 1. So the collision time for point 1 is just going to be 1. And then we're going to move on to our second collision. And for our second collision, we're just going to see, okay, well, point one has already been stopped by the time it reaches here. So all of this doesn't actually exist. Point one has stopped here, and it can't stop point two. So we're just going to realize that this collision never happens. And this is the final list. So this is all the same as in bronze, and what we've done here is we are able to basically find the collision time. So to solve the silver question, we're going to add something. If I collide into you, this is a really simple step, I'm just going to create a second list that's basically going to tell me who stopped me. So this is going to stop start at like nobody. And then since point 3 here stopped point 1, we're going to write 3 here. And then since these point 2 and 3 both had infinity, there's nothing here. But this is a really simple step. We're just going to add a point we're, we're going to add a value in a list that basically tells us who stopped this point. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to DFS. So this is the main silver component of the question. Um, in this example here, you can see that point 1 stopped point 3 and point 4. So we can actually build a graph with this list. So if you're familiar with graphs, you should know about parents, like when you have a list of parents. So in this tree, the parent is going to be the node that stopped you. So if in this case over here, since node or cow three was able to stop cow one, cow three is now cow one's parent. So we can build a tree like this. And since cow two wasn't stopped by anyone, it's just a separate part. So in this example down here, we can see that cow one has stopped cow three and cow four. So all of this corresponds to the graph here. And so what we're going to do is we are going to DFS up. So when we DFS, we're just going to note that this cow 2 right here is going to have zero children, so it stopped zero people, and it's going to have zero brain blame. But since cow 3 has stopped one cow, cow 2, it's going to have one blame. 
cal4 has zero blame, and cal1 has three blame because it stopped cal4, cal3, and cal2. So this number here is the number of children the cow has. So in our code, what we're going to do is we are going to add the number of children our cow has plus the number of blame each cow is assigned. So I'll show you more of this in the code. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to define our variables. So we are going to have two vectors, north and east, and what we're going to do is we are going to split up the cows into the north-facing cows or the east-facing cows. And the reason we're going to do this is because this part is really important to note about the question. The cows that are facing to the east can only intersect with the cows that are facing to the north. And the cows that are facing to the north can only intersect with the cows that are facing to the east. So two cows that are facing in the same direction can't intersect, which is why we're going to split them up. We have an infinity and a max value, and then we're going to have two things for the DFS. We're going to have an adjacency list and a parent list. So the way a parent list works is it's just going to be pointing to the parent. So we talked about this earlier, but basically it's going to be whoever stopped me is my parent in the graph. And then the adjacency list is just the other way around. So the adjacency list is for every node, it's going to point to my children or the people that I stopped. So the adjacency list is 2D and the parent is 1D. And then we have our answer vector, which is just the answer vector. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to have two macros, and these macros are just going to be first and second. They're just going to define F and S, and if you see them later, they just mean first and second. So I'm going to write the DFS. Okay, so I'm going to start off my answer as 1, and then I'm going to loop through all of my neighbors. So this is just going to loop through my adjacency list. I'm going to make sure that value isn't parent, which is, yeah. And then I'm going to basically add on the value here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add on the size of the smaller tree. So this is just your standard DFS. Uh, if you don't understand how a DFS works, there should be tutorials online. And then at the end, I have my answer vector. And I'm just going to mark the node value as the answer. So that means for this node, this is my size. This is the amount of blame that is assigned to me. And then at the end, because I do add up here, I'm going to return my answer. And that's all there is to my DFS. Okay, we're going to move on to the main. And the first thing we're going to do is just read in input. So again, we are going to split into the north and east. So I'm going to read it in. And I'm going to split if it's east facing, it's going to go in east. If it's north facing, it's going to go in north. Now, the next step is to create the meeting times. So, like I mentioned earlier, it is really important that the north and the east cows will only intersect with the opposite direction. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a for loop, or two for loops, and it's going to iterate through the north cows and the east cows. So this is going to give every possible pair of north or east cows. So what we're going to do is we are going to try and figure out the time of intersection. So we have our x time and our y time, which is basically the east and the north intersection times, or who's get stopped. So if they meet at the same time, or if they meet at the same square at the same time, they're just going to pass each other, and that's mentioned in the problem statement. And then the next thing we're going to check is we're basically going to check whether or not this intersection does happen, so if it's positive, and which one gets intersected first. So if this one is larger, then we're going to push back this, and if this one is larger, we're going to push back this. So right here we have the time. We're going to have the cow being stopped, the cow that is stopping the other cow, and then whether or not it's north or east. So now we have all of our meeting times, and I'm just going to sort this. So the next thing we're going to do is we are basically going to find out who actually was able to intersect. So this is the answer vector. All of this code is pretty much the same as the one in my other video, uh, the one describing the bronze question. So what we're going to do next is we are basically going to find the ones that actually intersect. And there are a couple of cases for this. So the first case is that neither of the two have already intersected. So both cows have not intersected with anyone else yet. And what this means is that their answer vector, or the time that they intersect, is going to have a value of infinity. 
So this means that they are both not stopped. And in this case, cow one, or like I mentioned earlier, the cow getting stopped, is going to be stopped. The other case is that cow one, or the cow getting stopped in this case, has not been stopped, but cow two has been. So this is a little bit more complicated. So if cow one has not been stopped yet, that means there's still a possibility that cow two can stop it. So what we're gonna do is we are going to split it up into east and north. So the first case, in the first case, we're going to see whether or not they intersect. So this is pretty similar. We're just going to check whether or not it's possible to intersect. And if it is, we are just going to mark it as intersected. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the opposite direction. So now that this is over, we are going to work on the DFS. So at this point, we've found what time that they intersect. We've marked all of the parents and the adjacency lists. So now we can go into the DFS. So in the beginning, all of the parent values are marked as negative one. So if a parent is marked as negative one, that means it is the root of a tree. So if it's a root of a tree, I'm just going to run down a DFS. And when I do that, it's going to run my program, run my function, and it's going to mark the answer vector. At the very end, I'm just going to output my answer vector value. So you may have noticed that there is going to be a little problem with answer being one at first. This is kind of necessary. There are ways to go around it, but all we have to do is at the very end, we're just going to subtract one. Once we finish this, our program is basically done.